Hello and welcome to the show. I'm back to recreating some vehicle stunts and today we are doing the, the classic car flip. This has been in numerous films and TV shows. If you ever watched the old A-Team uh, episode, I think they have this kind of crash once uh, once an episode. Uh, basically, uh, you've got your baddie is chasing your goodie in, in a sort of a classic car chase. At some point the baddie will lose control or he'll be pushed off the road and he will hit a parked car. And in hitting the parked car his vehicle will go sailing into the air and do a spectacular barrel roll and uh, then his car will be wrecked. Of course, when they do, when they film this kind of stunt, they will have a ramp set up in front of the, the front of the line of parked vehicles, or they'll have pneumatic cannon or whatever in the bottom of the car, uh, and they'll flip using their methods. However, I was wondering if on a BeamNG drive I could get a vehicle to flip from a head-on collision. Maybe not quite a head-on collision, uh, because yeah, you, you want to kind of aim for the side uh, of the vehicle in a vague attempt to get in the thing to flip. Now the two cars that I'm starting with, the Grand Marshal and the Moonhawk, are probably sort of your typical your typical car chase stuff. The Grand Marshal as just a general civilian vehicle, and the Moonhawk I could imagine as a baddies car. Uh, on the first first attempt, it was just a crash, and this is this is what I was sort of expecting to happen. I wasn't expecting the Moonhawk to still be working from a fairly heavy uh, head-on collision, but uh, it was. Um, yeah, th th I wasn't really expecting this to work, to cause uh, the cars to flip. The Moonhawk is fairly low to the ground, in fact it's very low to the ground, um, so I was never really expecting it to sort of do anything other than have a head-on collision. The Grand Marshal is also not the Grand Marshal is not particularly low to the ground, it's also got a fairly flat front, so you can't really use it as a ramp, especially not in a car uh, as low as the one I was using. In those two collisions, of course, I was seeing the Grand Marshal was going quite a long way back, so I put a barrier behind, behind it to kind of see what would happen if it couldn't move quite so much. And the answer is not a lot. <laughs> we, the barrier I hoped was going to be a stationary one, it, it wasn't. It did move about, but of course it did uh, a lot more force and it went into the crash between the two cars as the Grand Marshal couldn't move quite as freely as it did before. It, it got the Grand Marshal a lot more in the air, but uh, the Moonhawk never really looked like it was going to roll. It was still working though. Next crash, I, I may have uh, bulged it up a little bit on the approach, had a like, complete head-on crash and broke all of physics. Uh, the game got very unhappy at me and then promptly threw a concrete barrier at my car and uh, <laughs> squashed the roof. That one wasn't the best of crashes, but uh, <laughs> that quite amusing. I'm not sure quite what I did to confuse the game, but uh, yeah few more attempts with this and it never really looked like it was ever going to cause the Moonhawk to roll. It, there was just never, it was never li never lifting the car up in the air at all. Having a few problems controlling the vehicles on here at high speeds, uh, I was getting the, uh, the Grand Marshal up in the air a fair bit from the impact with the barrier, like squashing the car between the barrier and my vehicle was causing the Grand Marshal to go up in the air, but it wasn't causing my car to do the flip that I was really looking for. Uh, having managed to un uh, unstick the two vehicles, the, <laughs> the Moonhawk sorry, was still working remarkably well. It survived almost all of the crashes. It would often kill the front wheel, but um, yeah, the car would actually still work. This was my best attempt using these two fairly normal vehicles. I just clipped the front of the Grand Marshal, and it got the Moonhawk briefly briefly went up into the air but it wasn't it wasn't very much and it never really looked like it was going to be possible to cause the car to roll so I had to get a little bit creative and I was going to use the supercar as the civilian traffic now the supercar is much lower at the front and it's a lot more of a ramp shape than that of the Grand Marshal so the hope was to kind of use it as a ramp the first first impact it didn't really work. The cars were crash welded together again, uh, the Moonhawk was still working, and my front wheel had ended up in my windscreen. Uh, done quite a lot of damage to my car, but it hadn't really uh, looked like rolling at any point in that crash. However, on the next attempt things went much better. Hit the front of the supercar, and we got a roll. It's not the huge airtime and spectacular flips that you see, <laughs> see in the movies necessarily, but we got a roll from the Moonhawk. It, did, it, it hit the front of the car and it flipped over and it was still working. Although the front wheel is... That's not the angle that you really uh, want to wheel at. So I carried on uh, just to make sure that it wasn't sort of a fluke and sure enough on the next attempt it was a very very similar outcome. The front, <laughs> pretty much identical outcome in fact. Uh, my car still worked, the front wheel was at a wonky angle um, and we managed to do a roll which is uh, what we were aiming for. Again, carried on for a little bit. It is kind of fun uh, doing this. This time I 
it was only a tiniest of clips on the on the front of the supercar but it was causing the vehicle to roll we weren't getting the ramp effect from this it was it was hitting the supercar and it was lifting up just about enough in the air so that as it twisted from the impact it caused the car to flip over not the huge ramp sort of airtime that i was hoping for but it was rolling the vehicle so we weren't getting the airtime, and I wanted to move on to trying something a little, a little bit different. Uh, we're going to keep with the civilian car as a supercar, as it's the most ramp-shaped of vehicles I have. And this time I was going to use a big 4x4 uh, off-road pickup truck. Still, I would say, vaguely sensible. Perhaps not the most sensible of baddie chase vehicles, uh, but still within the realms of possibility to use a vehicle like this. Uh, it has got quite high ground clearance, it's an off-road, uh, it's the off-road version of this pickup truck, and the idea with that is it would uh, have plenty of ground clearance to hit the front of the car and use it as a ramp, and sure enough, uh, it worked. We, <laughs> we, got, we got quite a lot of distance, we weren't getting sort of the massive height, on the on the collision but we were getting an awful lot of distance um, I was also perhaps I could have moved the supercar a little bit further forward so we didn't end up in the water so much uh, but we were getting the the desired effect the pickup truck going barreling into the trees uh, this time around <laughs> on this attempt I also managed to hit the supercar so fast it vanished I'm still not sure quite where it ended up it's it went poof <laughs> it's, it's gone. Uh, I guess I hit. I got it to 88 miles an hour, and it is now. Yeah, it, <laughs> I don't know. No clue where that thing ended up. I did a few attempts with this, and every time it was pretty much the same story. Hit the front of the supercar, and it acted as a ramp, as I was as I was kind of hoping for. Uh, this time, the truck getting stuck in a bush. However, having a supercar as sort of a parked vehicle is a little bit unlikely. They're very, very rare. Uh, so what about a more realistic civilian car, a Toyota Celica? It is a sports car, perhaps not the most common of vehicles, but it is also the right sort of shape. And sure enough, on the first attempt, we got a similar amount of airtime. We got the rolls that we were looking for, and the pickup truck ended up in the water. This time, uh, it was actually, it had sort of sunk completely and the, the pickup truck was surviving most of these impact it was killing the steering again much like with the moonhawk it was ki killing the the steering on the side that, that i hit the car with um but it was still um it was still moving the engine was still working uh, i think that's probably the most flips i had <laughs> in a crash on that one did an awful lot of barrel rolls uh, off the collision with the Celica. Amazingly, the Celica was still working as well. This is... I wasn't expecting this, a front-engine, front-wheel drive car. Normally, if you take damage at the front, it will kill something. It will kill the engine or kill the driveline fairly easily. Uh, but no, it was it was still working, despite having a massive pickup truck uh, running over it. I think I did three or four times uh, with this. Uh, the, the collision that time was so severe, it caused the Celica to roll as well, uh, which was... Uh, <laughs> That was a new thing. Sleeker didn't survive that one, I can tell you that. And the pickup truck was still working, but it uh, was stuck on its side. So, the pickup was rolling off a sports car. What about a more kind of normal civilian traffic vehicle? Perhaps the Covert, a fairly common sort of generic hatchback. So, we, we, I went down the straight as fast as I could, hit the Covert, and sure enough, we get... Uh, get a roll that wasn't even the best of hits on the cover i had it fairly square on work rather than on the side but it still caused the pickup truck to roll it did do the damage did some weird things with the chassis we managed to bend it and twist it all at the same time and somehow keep everything working and now we've got a very weird car i would love to be able to set the game to have a car like this and try and drive or try and complete a race with this as the, <laughs> this is a, a, a rather a weird thing also not very easy to drive as I instantly managed to roll it. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure how that pickup truck is uh, is still working from that, but it was, again, I messed around with this a few times, and we're getting the same results. We were hitting, hitting the hatchback, and it was causing a spectacular roll. Still weren't getting the height that I really wanted, uh, but we were getting uh, an awful lot of rolls and getting quite a lot of distance. So having seen it rolled off the hatchback, Perhaps it would roll off the Grand Marsh, went back to the car I was using as the original uh, sort of parked civilian traffic. And yeah, going to see uh, how it fares off here after running down the long straight we hit the Grand Marshal, and it causes the pickup truck to roll. However, we weren't quite getting the same ramp effect uh, with the Grand Marshal. We also weren't getting the same distance. What was happening with this car more is we would hit the front of the Grand Marshal, and the front of my pickup truck would kind of start to lift up into the air. Um, but it wouldn't really be enough to roll the car. 
Uh, in fact, on that occasion, you might have just about got away with it, but on most of the collisions were happening, is it would hit the front, it would lift the front up, but in the collision as well, it was twisting the car. Because I was hitting it at uh, not dead on, I was hitting it at an angle, uh, it was causing the vehicle to twist, and in that twisting and being slightly in the air, that was what was causing it to roll. The Grand Marshal was also working. The civilian cars fared remarkably well. The steering was still working in this vehicle as well, which was surprising. Normally the steering would have been broken. I thought I'd go for onboard view this time around, and uh, just, just for a bit of fun. And uh, sure enough, it was fairly straightforward to roll the big off-road uh, pickup truck off the front of pretty much everything uh, that I put down there. Uh, yeah, it was still it was still driving. It was still working, and yeah, it, and the roof you probably would have been in a considerable amount of pain if you'd been driving the pickup truck because the roof is rather crushed. Um, but yeah, we were getting the desired flip. Now, of course, the big off-road pickup truck does have very, very high ground clearance and is a little bit less less of a common vehicle to have that much, that much ride height. So I moved on to the normal version of the pickup truck. I think this is the sport version, uh, just so I have the most speed because speed is important in this. I think. It's always good to have some speed. Um, this is perhaps not quite as low a uh, ride height as the Moonhawk, however it's sort of running on fairly fairly normal road suspension, I would say. We're going to start it off against the supercar because this is the easiest, so easiest sort of ramp vehicle. Sure enough, on the first attempt it was causing, causing the the more, the more road orientated pickup to flip. And this one was still blooming working as well. I swear cars were more fragile on this before, maybe just this style of crash as a lot of energy is being used in rolling the car uh, rather than sort of on the initial impact, uh, perhaps that's saving these vehicles from sort of extensive damage. Again, tried a, a few more times, weren't quite getting the huge ramp, sort of the ramp effects that we were getting with the off-road one, which is not surprising, as uh, yeah, that had enough ground clearance to sort of drive over the supercar if I wanted it to. Uh, this wouldn't do that, uh, so we weren't quite getting there. <laughs> this, the, the supercar is wandering off in the distance, but it was getting it to roll. I moved on to using the Celica as the sort of the stationary car first attempt it didn't roll it was just sort of a, a, a more normal head-on collision <laughs> still the pickup truck was uh, working which yeah this thing was surviving a hell of a lot better the sleeker didn't that was pretty broken <laughs> from that collision however on the next attempt and we got the car to roll uh, we bent the chassis completely in half again. Unfortunately, it ended up on the roof and uh, couldn't get it moving. That was a tiny clip on the front of the sleeker as well that, uh, that managed to cause that to roll. Again, it, not quite the ramp sort of roll that I was that I was aiming for that you see uh, more often. Again, <laughs> the cars got crash welded together and we managed to pull the sleeker over in uh, probably one of the bigger, more spectacular of the crashes that I had, uh, bringing, bringing the uh, the civilian car with me. Uh, it was causing the pickup truck to roll, but because it, it wasn't quite as... Uh, I guess it wasn't quite as smooth as you were getting with the big off-road vehicle. That's not a particular surprise, though. So having managed to use the, the supercar, we moved on to the Grand Marshal, using that as the, uh, the vehicle to aim for. And again, it was causing the pickup truck to roll. Uh, when it came to sort of these two, it was a lot more the case of it was the collision and sort of the twisting of the car that was causing it to roll. It wasn't really ramping off the front of the Grand Marshal. It was, yeah, you weren't getting the distance that we were getting earlier. Uh, it wasn't really using the Grand Marshal as a ramp. But it was rolling it. So the actual sort of concept of the vehicle rolling from the impact is... I guess fairly sensible, at least, in, at least within the physics of this game, which I think are pretty good, it is uh, a fa fairly sensible conclusion. I decided to mess around, because why not? I got a van. Also, don't have an itchy nose and try and control a vehicle on here. It doesn't end very well, or it could have ended a lot worse as I went off to explore the scenery. The van, much slower. I thought I'd put the Celica down, just as a more, a more sort of normal civilian car than the supercar, but still the right shape. And there we go. We're <laughs> Okay, the van was rolling. Admittedly, the van does have uh, a bit higher ride height than uh, some of the other vehicles. I love how we managed to get the sleeker all the way around the corner and parked on a rock. That was that, that's quite impressive, actually, to have got it to steer or ended up over there. Again, had a few attempts with this. Similar story, really. 
um, with the with the pickup truck in that it was it wasn't ramping off the car, but it was causing it to roll. It did do quite extensive damage to the front of the Celica. <laughs> the engine is in a very wonky angle, um, but yeah, it was rolling. I decided to have a go with the the Grand Marshal, uh, as as why not again as another fairly normal, fairly sensible car. It's still using the Celica as the target vehicle. If you like, after a run down the long straight, not quite on the first attempt. Interesting thing about that first attempt is it did actually start to kind of climb up the front of the Celica as if to use it as a ramp, just sort of run out of speed. It lo lost too much momentum in the impact on the next attempt and got it to roll. Again, wasn't really a, a ramp uh, roll with this car. However, it worked. We were getting the normal vehicles to roll off, in effect, a parked car. Uh, so, so conclusion-wise, in this, yes, it is quite possible to have a, a car sort of roll in uh, an impact with a stationary vehicle. Uh, you are unlikely to get the really, uh, the, like the really high, high amount of airtime that, that we see from the films with a normal collision. But you use a big off-road car, and under the right sort of scenario with the right vehicles you can get the big spectacular roll. We got some some pretty damn <laughs> spectacular flips in in this challenge. So there we go. That is it for this video, guys. So thank you very much for watching. And until next time, goodbye.